Hey everyone, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, we're gonna be doing an AMA uh, for being and becoming a senior support engineer. My name is Ulises, I'm a support engineer. I've been with GitLab for about a year and almost a year and a half now. And we'll be doing a short introduction so that anybody seeing this in the future, whether it's long, uh, near future or way ahead in the future, don't know who is who and I will just get to know everyone. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the introductions. Um, yeah, who wants to go first? All right, we'll just move in the order in which they appear in the video then. Uh, Cleveland, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Yeah, um, my name is Cleveland. I'm a senior support engineer here at GitLab. Um, I've been at GitLab for about three years now, um, and I'm based out of Austin, Texas. Thank you. Um, yep, Bree, in my screen, it looks like you're up next. Cool. Hi, my name is Bree Carranza. I'm also a senior support engineer at GitLab. I'll be at three years in May. I uh, joined right during the pandemic. Nice. Thank you. Oh, uh, Manu, you're up next on my screen. All right. Hi, I'm, I'm Manu. Um, I've been with GitLab for, yeah, about a year and a half, very similar to Ulysses. I'm also a senior support engineer, and I'm based in Germany. Thank you. Uh, Sam, you're up next. Hey, uh, I'm Sam. My pronouns are they, them. Uh, I'm been a GitLab for like a year and a half now, I believe so, if my math is correct. Uh, I'm based in Providence, Rhode Island, and sometimes Brazil. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Kate, you're up next. Yeah, hello, I'm Kate. I am originally from uh, Ukraine and I've recently moved to Amsterdam. And I've been it, I'm just a say, support engineer, no seniors, <laughs> but I really want to become one. And uh, I've been with GitLab for two years, two and a couple of months. Yes. That's awesome. It. Thank you. Um, Andrew, you're up next. I'm Andrew Conrad, senior support engineer, been at GitLab, it'll be two years in July, um, and I am based in San Francisco. All right, awesome, and uh, we have John next. Hi, everyone. I joined GitLab uh, five months ago tomorrow, and uh, it's been a fun ride. I'm based in um, the Hudson Valley in New York. Awesome. Thank you. I believe that is everybody in the meeting. Uh, please let me know if I've overlooked anyone, but I think that's about it. So I think we can get started with the questions. Uh, for this, I will just throw the question up in the air, and I guess anybody that feels comfortable answering the question can just go ahead and do it. So we'll start with the list, the big one that was up in the document. So the question is, how often do you update your promotion doc and do you keep track of your wins and how? I will start because this is one of my favorite topics. Um, I update my promotion doc at least monthly. I have like a monthly professional development meeting with my manager that's like separate from one-on-one. -on -one. So we take a step back and talk about professional development. And I will say, I think it's really important to have that meeting on the calendar and not skip it. There's a time where I was like, I'm really busy when I skip this. And he was like, let's not do that. I was really glad that I made the time for it because that's important. I'm also a big, huge fan of using Google Forms to track basically anything. So if you have a Google Form that is just like, what is a cool thing I did this week? You can have that automatically create a spreadsheet for you. And then you have all that information. It's not really hard to go back and generate six months later, like looking back through six months of emails or whatever to figure out what you did. Don't do that. Keep track of it like weekly. And then you can go back and delete things that you don't love. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, does anybody else have any more input on that question? Yeah, I was going to say like, this is something that I, I kind of struggled with. Um, it took me a long time to form a habit around 
you know, basically, uh, you know, things that you like about <laughs> the work that you do um, and, you know, kind of doing a reflection on, you know, your past weeks um, or even past quarter. And so like, I started doing it by quarter because that was kind of easiest for me because I would tend to forget and kind of like what Bree said, I would be like, oh, I'll just, you know, I don't have time for this. I'll do it next week. I'll do it next week. And then weeks go by and then you don't track anything. And so at the very least, um, you know, on a quarterly basis, I take a whole entire day, even maybe two days and just sit down and be like, okay, what did I do this quarter? Because it should be tracked somewhere. You know, you have your issues in GitLab. Um, you have tickets, so you can kind of like start there and then you might, it might jog your memory and be like, oh yeah, I remember when I did this and that was pretty cool. Or like, this was a great ticket. Um, so, you know, I, I was doing it on a quarterly basis. Um, especially the things in Slack, uh, those are the things you kind of have to remember to, to kind of pull out and ma make note of them because they will disappear from Slack and after a quarter, they're going to be gone. So, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, it, if I were to to do that process again, um, I would probably do it more on a on a regular monthly basis than, than like a quarterly basis. But um, any regular cadence, I think, is is helpful to just re reflect on on the things that you've done. Awesome, thank you. Um, I think that's about the time we have for one question. So we'll just go ahead and move over to the next one, which is. What do you think is the biggest difference between a support engineer and a senior support engineer? So this is an interesting one. Um, and something I feel like we could do a lot better to define. Personally, I feel that it's leadership and looking at bigger pictures. So um, I try to, in my daily work since becoming a senior, look at more of how can I help everyone else instead of just how can I individually take tickets. Um, so sometimes, I mean, it affects my decision making constantly. Like, ideally, instead of working on my own individual tickets, 100% of the time, I look for opportunities much more aggressively to um, it could be find a way to help everyone in general. It could be a way to mentor somebody. Um, it could be like my project that I've been unable to find time for in a while, GitLab Star, um, among th other things like that, um, helping in senior help sessions and uh, looking for where there are pain points and what I can do to help with that. Well, thank you, Andrew. Um, does anybody else have any more input on that? Yeah, I'll just say, um, you know, one of the things that was difficult for me when becoming a senior was I had this idea that becoming a senior was more, um, you know, technically inclined and that I had to have a certain level of technical skill set in order to become um, a senior. And I think kind of what Andrew said, like, it is kind of a mindset um shift from doing your individual tickets to kind of uh more of a leadership position um where you can look for opportunities to do things beyond just the scope of a ticket and beyond the scope of just like helping a customer with the solution but you know do those solutions kind of expand out to the greater team do they um are they things that we need to do to the product differently? And then having those conversations, knowing where to go, knowing what people to talk to. And so um, it, it's, it is something that is difficult to define, I, I think, especially in an organization like ours. Um, it's not so cut and dry. You know, in previous jobs, it was very much, if you're a senior, uh, you know these sets of skills and you can do these things. Whereas if you're not, you, you just, you know, you do whatever it is that intermediate role is. Um, so yeah, it is, it is kind of weird because there's not a huge, huge difference. That's like very like obvious. Um, but I think once you're kind of doing it, it starts to kind of make sense on, on what it means to be a senior. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, well, yeah, that's about enough time for this question. So we'll just move 
on to the next one. This is a pretty straightforward question, and it is, are you working towards staff support engineer or something else in terms of a promotion or changing your role? So I definitely have interest in moving up and almost certainly towards staff, but I also feel that um, while that's a goal that I have in the long term, it's not something that I'm like actively working towards right now. Right now, I feel like there's far more immediate problems to address. Um, so yeah, if that helps. Yeah, thank you. My short answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, Bree, Manu, uh, anybody else? Yeah, about four weeks ago, I would say, um, in my one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we, we did talk about it a bit more specifically. Um, I mean, I've been taking part in the Staff Engineers Path book club, for example. I'm, I'm definitely interested in, in all of this just on a theoretical level. But also I noticed that me and my manager had been talking about all these staff engineer-ish things for a while. And I had never really said, hey, you know what? I want to pursue this. And I have this tendency to, to hide behind uncertainty like that. And like, because right, if I tell her, yes, I want this, then, oh my God, now I have to do it. Now, I, oh, <laughs> that's scary. But yeah, about about four weeks ago, I think I said, you know what? Let's let's not hide behind this uncertainty. Yes, this is something I I want. Doesn't mean uh, doesn't mean that that I will have to finish it within this quarter, right? But it is, as Andrew said, yes, it's something I have on on the agenda at some point. Uh, so this makes me think an, an additional point for me is basically from when I started, I. And like talking to my manager about my goals here, it was like, I want to move up. I think staff might be an eventual thing. Like I tend to have that ambition and he knew it from the start. Thank you. Uh, Bree, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Sure, no worries. I'm also in that staff engineers path book club and I love it. I'm very much a like, planner kind of a person I like having a goal in mind it's definitely something I'm working towards and I feel it's very shoot for the moon even if you miss you'll hit you'll land among the stars which I hate because it's not how anything is structured but I feel like if I'm thinking about okay what's the next step how I can, can I be more useful to the team then even if I don't get to staff I'm a better like teammate for having tried all right well Thank you everyone for that. I think we will have plenty of time to move to this optional question, which is uh, aimed towards non-senior support engineers. And is, are there any non-seniors in attendance that are decidedly not planning to work towards a promotion? And if so, what are your reasons? Um, do we have anyone here that's not actively looking to get promoted? I'll take that as a note, um, and we'll just that's guide great. that one. Perfect. Off. Yeah, you that's should awesome. all work towards the promotion. <laughs> yep, I agree. Uh, yep, that's awesome. So we'll just move on to the next one. And the question is, how long did it take you from deciding, yes, I'll be going for that promotion to handing in the finished promo doc? And how long did it take you to arrive to that yes decision? So I kind of was just saying that from the start, I wanted to get promoted. Um, I So I was hired in July, and by November of last year, so a year and a few months, um, I got the promotion. So I came in already knowing, like, before my start date that I wanted to work towards senior. Um <laughs> It might be helpful context to also know that this is my first tech job ever and that I worked in a grocery store before this. Um, so I feel like that goes to show that anyone can do this. <laughs> um, and 
I think I've answered the question, so I don't know if I should say more. I'll let someone else talk. It happened very, very quickly for me, and it wasn't really planned like that. Although I have to, to say that similarly to Andrew, right when I joined, I already knew that that would happen at some point, but it was not very clear how quickly it would happen to me. It's the first time I'm working in a environment where the roles are as clearly defined. So it's just not something I had a lot of experience with, despite probably having had enough experience to be a senior very early on, which is also why it happened fairly quickly, I guess. Um, but again, as I mentioned before, I had this, uh, yeah, at some point, I'm sure I will want to. Yes, thank you, Miss Manager. <laughs> um, and then once once I had just as I had it with the staff thing recently, I said, okay, yeah, let I, I will want to do this. How how do we make this happen? Um, shortly afterwards, uh, the the next deadline was happening, so it was a bit of a surprise. I think something was different to the process from the years prior. So also my manager was a bit surprised by the timing. And then it turned out like I had one week to create my promo doc if it was uh, to happen in that quarter or we would wait an, a full quarter, which wouldn't have been bad at all. Like who cares in the grand scheme of things, right? But I decided, okay, let's, let's give it a try because my reasoning really uh, was not that I wanted it so quickly, but I knew that if we wait a quarter, I would agonize over creating the finished promo doc for a full quarter like it would i would work on it so much and it would not be that much better and as you can all see it worked out with the one i managed to create from zero like i hadn't even cloned the the template from zero to to finished promo doc within a week um, i think i worked on it two or three days full time Um, yeah, I'll try and, and keep mine short, but, um, it took me, I, I had different experience. I, it took me a very, very long time to decide. Um, I, I would say probably about two years into, you know, being at GitLab started having that conversation with my manager and, you know, my manager was kind of like, yeah, I think you're kind of, you're kind of ready for this. I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and so my my initial reaction was like no i'm not really like interested and then every one on one after that was like no seriously like we need to have this conversation and like decide um you know how how you would like to do it and um you know there was no particular pressure from my manager but um it was brought up because i i think they probably saw it in me that i was ready to make that move um and so like you know a quarter went by and i had kind of thought about it um another had quarter had gone by you know am i ready and I, there's a lot of things that were like on my checklist like oh i have to do this and i have to do this and i have to be better at this and all these kind of things and so at the end of about you know i would say like nine months later i was like okay i think i finally committed to to doing this um and then i spent probably like a quarter seriously focusing on like what would make me feel better to move forward and then in addition like what what do I need to do to to accomplish my promo doc in the way that would you know make me feel good about um, my promotion and then present that to to leadership? Um, the interesting thing about that is I did agonize over uh, you know that quarter um, having my promo doc and working on it like every day and thinking like it could be even more perfect when realistically um, I probably didn't need to spend as much time on it. Um, it's just that. It, it made me feel better <laughs> so um in the end yeah you probably don't need to take that long to to, to make decisions like i like i did but um it was kind of a, a long drawn out process but having a manager that can support you in that is is really crucial because i really didn't think that i was ready and i it took my manager in telling me that i was ready and giving me the reasons why um to really take that step I just want to 
two points that you said, because I think our experiences were really similar and we kind of talked about it. It took me forever to get to yes, but I think being comfortable moving forward is important. And you're right, having a good manager, I think like that's what I want from a manager is like not pressure, but hey, Brie, you said you were thinking about this thing. I think you should. Is there a good reason not to? Let's keep talking about it. Was really important. If I didn't have that, I would just be doubting myself. And the doubt myself will just like kill the whole thing. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, thank you everyone for pitching in on that question. Um, we'll just move on to the next one. So we'll have some more time for extra questions if needed. Um, so this one is aimed towards seniors that have been for a while. I honestly don't know what makes it a while because uh, to me, over six months, it's already quite a long time. But um, yeah, the question is, how do you feel your role has changed with the rollout of the SGG model? So were any of the seniors before SGG? I don't, I'm not certain. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> I think I've been a senior for ages. Sorry, I was like, no, you're fine. So I think you're that... the only one that can answer that. So <laughs> yeah, I figured as much. Um, has your role changed a lot? Yes and no. Um, the, the group that helps specifically has become smaller. Um, most SDG groups now have a senior in there. They kind of get tagged on when you know they run into a problem and, and you need to help them out. Um, before that, it was more global. And so you get a lot more different questions, different people that ask the questions. Um, but what you do is it basically the same. Um, they have a complicated ticket, they are stuck, and they need your help. And you, it doesn't mean you have the answer. It doesn't mean you even know the topic that they're going for uh, or, or uh, requesting help for. Um, they just need someone else to, to help you look at it. And having a, an SDG model doesn't change it. At least not in my experience. Yeah, that's fair. I appreciate that. It's. Yeah, it, it, I don't see that it would change it too much. It's just a smaller group of people, but it feels like it should be quite similar. Uh, due to lack of other seniors that were seniors before the SGs got rolled out, we'll just uh, do with that answer for now. Um, if anybody else is watching this asynchronously, please feel free to answer this question. We'd love to have your input. And we'll move on to the next question. Uh, how do you feel your ticket work specifically has changed after becoming a senior? Is it more, less, faster, or slower? So I touched on this a little bit earlier of like focusing less on individual tickets. Um, it does depend, of course, on ticket volume and stuff, because I still don't want things to breach. Um, it also depends because I'm much more likely. I think I already helped a lot with uh, stars, escalations, and um, emergencies before I was senior, but I do so or do so more now. So I feel like I maybe take I take fewer tickets. I think, but a lot of times they're ones that are already in bad positions <laughs> or more sensitive. Um, and so, yeah. Um, so slightly fewer tickets, more stressful tickets. And then I try to fill any extra time I have with other like senior activities. Yeah, I'd say that's similar for me as well. It's, it's definitely fewer tickets. Um, 100%. Often, same reasons. I think sometimes it's it's actually fewer tickets and not necessarily more complex tickets at the same time. But as you said, then there is these other senior-ish activities that 
take time. So you need to to use that to to balance a bit as well. Yeah, I would say um, the balance is pretty challenging for me personally. Um, I've intentionally decreased the amount of tickets that I take. Probably it's probably half since I've become a senior. Um, and personally, I like to challenge myself with specific tickets and make sure that I still, you know, I'm still doing things that are interesting to me and that I'm still taking tickets that are fun to do because then like, what, why, why would you be here? So I, I try and make sure that I'm still keeping some, some, something interesting that I can continue to work on in terms of tickets. Um, and then again, to echo everybody else. Yeah. There's, there's a whole wide range of other activities, whether it's documentation or just, you know, working with, um, you know, other product groups or something like that. Um, that take up time and I find it challenging because sometimes there's not always like a task checkbox to do in your job. And sometimes things just come up and you just do it. And that's part of being a senior. Um, but I, it's, it's hard because sometimes you have these tickets are like, oh, there's not, there might be nothing to do. You're like, oh, I just have a couple of tickets to juggle. And then the next day it's just completely changed. Like <laughs> everything gets thrown out the window. And so, there's not you have to be flexible because there's going to be days where you have less tickets there's going to be days where you're only doing crazy amount of tickets or maybe you just have one ticket it's you're working with you know five other people on a very complex problem so it really does vary quite a bit so i think i can add some context to cleveland's answer really quick i was in a support global group with cleveland for a long time and he takes he took a ton of tickets. So having half the amount is very reasonable in this case <laughs> because probably could have had half the amount before becoming senior and still would have been perfectly contributing to FRT. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to the next uh, question now. Thanks everyone for your answers. And the question is, how do you feel about the promotion process here at GitLab and can you compare it with prior experiences? Well, as I said earlier, um, in, uh, it's the first time I'm working in, in an environment like this where it's as clearly laid out both the roles and also the process. Um, so comparing it with my prior experience, it is amazing. <laughs> it's so, so good to have these guidelines to where you can measure yourself against and, and see how you're doing in these individual areas that we, whoever that exactly is, decided are important, are the ones that you should look out for. It's so good to have that and to be able to, to measure your own work and judge your own work against that. It's not that I thought I didn't do good work at my old job. It's just that I was the only one who, who really judged it and could judge it. And I also had to make up the criteria and that's that's not fun after a while and so that that's what i really like and i i think it's great that these criteria are um intertwined in the process as much like you can it's it's really easy to it's not necessarily check boxes exactly but it's very similar to that like you can really go through a list and see yeah 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 makes sense I can see that, or you can can figure out. Oh, right, yeah, not quite yet. And then you know, okay, I'll focus on this, and you know where to focus on, and that's great. Yeah, in my previous companies, um, you became senior after working four years at the company, and I hated that concept. And and in the Netherlands, that's a pretty common concept because it's like, oh yeah, you have the experience here. Um, being senior is more than having that experience. And within GitLab, it's, you get, like Manuel said, you have a sort of a checkbox that you can see. It's like, okay, hey, you know, this is what I have to do in order to become a senior. 
and and don't get me wrong by the time you're getting promoted you've been doing this for a couple of months <laughs> so you're used to doing that work um, but it it gives you a very clear goal and, and idea of what it means to be a senior where in my previous companies i had a senior running around he was basically a junior but he, because he worked there for five years he was a senior you couldn't ask him anything because he didn't know anything but he had a title senior and that was about it we didn't get that that's way different so yeah i i love the concept that we have and, and it just works i have heard a lot of people go like oh yeah basically i have to do you know senior stuff before i become a senior yes it's true but it also is a very clear indication for everyone around you that you're capable of doing that I think a really thing that a thing that's really cool about the process here is how much in control of it you are as a person getting promoted. I've had sort of like, it's like a surprise. It's like, oh yeah, I didn't really expect this was coming. Hey, do you want this thing? It's like, no, I am in the driver's seat. As Cleveland mentioned, you can slow yourself down, but you can also, you can be in control of it to the extent that you want to be. And I think that's really cool. I like that agency. All right, awesome. Thank you for that. And the next question is, if you could change one thing about being a senior, what would it be? I would magically have more time to work on the senior <laughs> things I want to work on. <laughs> yeah, I join you there. All right, uh, any more real uh world answers that don't involve magic it, it's 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 um usually i i really recently reiterated my entire calendar so basically my entire mornings are focused on tickets and and that's mostly because most people in in EMEA are still sort of waking up and, and doing their own thing where in the afternoon um, that's out the window and so i really adjusted my entire calendar to have the morning to focus on complicated tickets and you know solving easy ones because well you handle those quickly um, and the afternoons are just filled with other things if you don't put anything in your calendar and and i mean literally it's like hey this is what i'm gonna do today that's not gonna happen you're you're basically gonna realize at some point it's like hey it's the end of my day where did my afternoon go or where did my entire day go and that's that's something that that I would necessarily like to change, but it's something to be very aware uh, when you become a senior that you need to be very strict with yourself in managing your time. Um, if not, anyone else for you will do it. I think that's basically the serious version of my answer. My answer was well, serious, <laughs> but not as helpful. <laughs> I <Yeah>. translated it. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I guess, yeah, uh, I would say from a non-senior perspective, right? I think having just more people overall would help, right? With the time thing. So just, you know, making sure to say it out loud. Uh, the, the fact that we don't have enough people sometimes makes it so that y'all, including me, non-seniors and seniors like, have to work a little bit extra and i think that's more often than not one of the reasons we don't have all the time we'd like to work on non-ticket things so I, I just wanted to make sure that we put that out there I, I agree and disagree at the same time yes having more people is nice um i've been working for gitlab almost five years now um, we've been hiring non-stop sport engineers and the fact that i ran out of time every day has never changed that's fair. And, and I, I think support team has, I don't know, increased by five to six fold since I started. And, and the number of tickets increase, um, the complexity increases. Basically, it, it always becomes more difficult because other people take up the easier ones, even if they're complex. Um, and you'll always lose time. 
Yeah, that's fair. Thank you for that input. I don't think anybody else here has been here for a song. So that's a really interesting take on things. I, I think we were all under the assumption that just having more people meant having somehow more time. But yeah, it's true that it may not always be the case. So thank you for that. I'll uh, move on to the next question, which is, has the promotion changed how you view yourself? I would say, I, as we kind of echoed multiple times, I already was working as a senior before I became a senior. Um, so not a whole lot changed besides the fact that I could justify working on those senior things a little easier. Um, so I didn't really see myself as like being different in the role or anything like that because I already knew I wanted this and was acting this way as much as I could before. Now it's just I can prioritize things slightly differently. Yeah, I don't, this is an interesting question because I don't think the promotion itself have, has changed how I view myself. I think it was the process leading up to it. And so, as I had mentioned earlier, I spent like a whole year trying to prep myself for the eventual promotion. But during that process was discussing with my manager, what are my strengths? And if anybody out there is anything like me, like I have a hard time writing that down. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to talk about myself and what I'm good at. And so like, to me, like, you know, all, all of my strengths, it was, a, it was a small list. And so it took my manager and helping me being like, no, this list is actually longer. And so I think it is the, the process of the promotion rather than the promotion itself, if that makes sense. But I wouldn't say that the way I, I view myself as any different, I would just say um, maybe confidence has increased in what I am good at. The question reminds me a bit about being slash becoming an adult, I guess, because we're all adults. I'm not sure about you, but I often Speak for yourself. Don't really feel like one <laughs> i still feel like a very silly little boy <laughs> and at the same time i do know that when i don't know i'm with a group of 15 year olds yes i am the person with more experience and the adult in the room Ugh. even though i make the same dumb jokes with you when no one is looking as these 15 year olds will make and and it's similar to that i think it's yes I'm I'm a senior and I know there is reasons for that and they make sense. But on the day to day, it's not like I'm always I'm not waking up and think, oh, next new day for the senior. No, it's a new day for me, for Manu. I'm just it's just me. And I'm a senior because I I am how I am. And I think that's uh the the change in view is really this realization of of what i just said like i'm a senior and there is reasons for that and being aware of that that's the change i think one thing that has changed for me is like in situations where i don't know the answer i'm much more likely to say i don't know the answer but here's what we can do about it because i think early on in my time it's easy for me to look around and think well I don't know, but I work with all these smart people. Someone will know. And now I much more often am like, yeah, I don't know, but we don't know. So how are we going to find out? I'm willing to be the person to like kind of ask the dumb question and help lead the charge a little bit. Um, the adult in the room thing that really kind of, the becoming an adult thing that also kind of resonates. Um, it's annoying, but sometimes you have to be responsible. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, we'll move on to the next one, which is what do you think is more important for a senior, technical skills or soft skills? So I tell people who ask me about being a senior all the time that it's soft skills. Like you could be the most technically competent person in all of GitLab, and that doesn't make you a senior. It's more about leadership and influence. I I kind of disagree. I've seen 
very smart people with, with not the best soft skills become senior here very quickly. Um, just by contributing you know, to every project that they can basically find and, and show that their technical skills, a, a good example of that was Kathleen who joined, he moved to a different team and left later, but um, he joined within six months of joining, he was a senior and nobody doubted him. You know, if you had a problem, ask him, he fixed it. He gave you an answer. He figured it out. He would dive through the code to, to give you an answer. Uh, his technical skills were, were unmatched and his soft skills were very lacking. Uh, so how long ago did that happen? Because I feel that there's been a shift in how um, senior promotions are given. That's what I would have said as well. Yeah, I think this is something that might have changed a bit over time. It's it, We don't only look at technical skills. Um, back then, it was a little bit more. Back then, I'm talking two years ago. <laughs> Make it sound long, long time ago, but that's not true. Um, so, I, go on. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I would... Um, there's not one more important than the other. Um, I think one of the things that was stopping me from becoming a senior was my technical ability. And I think kind of like I mentioned in the previous question, that list of things that I'm good at, it was a lot of the soft skills that started growing that I realized I am good at other things aside from just my technical know-how. And I think What's cool about the size of our team now is that we do have the ability to have a mixture of people um, that have highly technical skills and soft skills. And so, you know, I, I, those are very general things, but the soft skills can mean a lot of different things, whether that is just um, critical thinking and, you know, just problem solving, which doesn't necessarily mean that you have the in-depth technical knowledge, but um, I don't think right now in GitLab, I don't think one is more important than the other. I think that you play to your strengths and that if you have a good manager, um, which I <laughs> I think everybody is gonna have a great manager at GitLab, um, you're, you have to have those conversations with your manager to understand what are my strengths and how can I use them to become a senior, regardless of what that falls under yeah it's also that. something you can work on together with your manager you know if they point out hey you're Absolutely. technically a bit weak focus on it you know work on a few projects that to, to help you uh, skills make a few metric requests that, that help you know even if they're fairly simple you learn a lot from them you know that sort of thing and and vice versa with soft skills you know have a chat with a few others see what you can you know what they're bothering and, and how you can improve them or create an issue for them. Uh, you know, there's a lot that you have to do or can do. Uh, so yeah, it's not one or the other. I think it's both that you need to have it some capacity. Oh, uh, thank you for that, Ronald. Uh, that's all the time we had for that question. So I have to uh, cut it short for that. Uh, if anyone has any more answers, please do so asynchronously the document can always be updated and we'd love to have your input on this uh, question so the next question is do you feel more or less stressed as a senior or about the same just different ways of stress i guess i'd say about the same for me just different ways yeah my stress is internal <laughs> like it comes from me like it's not external pressures right it's all just internal pressures that in increase stress. Um, it's something you kind of have to just manage if you're that type of person. Um, some folks are very good under stress and, and pressure, but uh, for me personally, it's something that it takes some, some time to try and not put that kind of stress on yourself. Cause you're like, oh, I'm a senior now. I got to know all the things, uh, which is never going to be true. Um, but managing the stress, I think, is is something that takes some some work. 
Yeah, I would I would say I am a bit more stressed since I've become a senior. Not necessarily because I've become a senior. I think other factors play a role here. Um, but yeah, I absolutely agree with what Cleveland said. Like managing that your your expectations on your on yourself is very important, and is actually something that's also stressful <laughs> because you have to keep doing it, and it's not an easy thing to do. Thanks, everyone. Um, if anyone has any more input on that. All Just right. Plus one to everything Cleveland said. And like, I think Lee said this in a skip level once. It was like, all hands. Something was like, give yourself grace. Be like, do your best. Show up, do your best. And like, may that be enough. There will be tomorrow. Every ticket is either solved or not yet solved. Thank you. That. That does help a lot. Even though I'm not a senior, I often have to, you know, manage my own expectations as well. And that I hope that helps more than just me. Um, the next question is, do you think other support engineers understand clearly how to make the most of a senior support engineer's abilities to assist with their roles? Or do you find that seniors need to go looking for those opportunities and what are those abilities or skills? So I think to an extent, seniors don't know how seniors can help people. Uh, like, there's a lot of ways in which the role is, I feel, not as clearly defined as it could be. And one of those is how can anyone help anyone else? Um, I personally have had multiple people approach me for help on things. And I've also personally reached out to people who I identified as maybe needing help. Um, so I feel like there's a close to an even split there, maybe. Um, as far as like just anecdotally, how have people looked for things with me? Um, but I think that because it's not as well defined, we could do better as an entire, like everyone in support, understanding how we can use this. It's interesting i have a lot of people go like oh you should you know when i explain something oh you should you know document your knowledge how am i supposed to do that because i have no idea what i know that someone else doesn't but for me is is common knowledge would be completely new for someone else and that's very difficult for us to go oh hey i'm i'm you know i'm going to search for someone to help or or to to help someone when there are no indications. If I look at a ticket that has been breached for seven days, I can look at the ticket and see, okay, maybe I can give a hint in an internal note. In Slack, if there's no messages, I have no idea what everyone is doing. So I have no idea if they're running into trouble or not. And that's kind of the, the, the problem that you have because you're working remote. You don't see your colleagues struggle. So in Amer, we have the senior help sessions. That's one way in which I contribute a lot to others. Um, and probably the most frequent way that I do that. Um, that's interesting because anyone who feels that they specifically need help from a senior or just wants to hang out um, will attend that. But not everyone is either able to or interested in attending that or sees it as an option for them. And since we're a little bit over time now, we'll just move on to the rest of the questions if everybody's okay with it. Uh, let's try to keep the answers a bit shorter just uh, to make sure that we can fit them within the next eight minutes. So the next question is, how accurate or use useful is the handbook information on the senior support engineer role when applied to real life? Do you feel that it, you receive enough guidance in what your senior role is meant to look like or is it more left to each person to sort that out for themselves. So I've already said, I feel like it needs to be better to find. Yep. Same. Yeah, I have no idea what the page says, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I know enough uh, on how to perform my job and no one has said anything bad yet. So it seems to work out, but yeah, might, might need an overhaul. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
this one is more of an open question and it's uh do you have any practical tips on balancing uh, your ticket workload with making time for professional development find something so, um, that works for you and 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 it's yeah it sounds very lame but um i noticed when i started i literally spent eight hours a day working on tickets and i realized in the morning i could do five or six seven eight depending on on the difficulty in the afternoon two three four if i was lucky same amount of time that i had four hours in the morning four hours in the afternoon i was just wasn't productive so i made the decision to focus mainly on my tickets in the morning and use my afternoon for something else in my case it was doing trainings you know making modules working on my promo doc um, and, and kind of split up like that if you can find something like that to work for you use it so i haven't been very good at sticking to this recently but i had at some point recognized i was having issues setting aside time and i just put blocks on my calendar like three days a week this time i'm going to use to work on issues this for merge requests this for training um and i've had some success in that i definitely flex depending on our ticket load so when we have a lot of tickets and i have a lot of other stuff to do then i skip that but um having it there at least makes me consider it like three times a week and also benefit of adding it in your calendar means that someone else will book your time there right what helped me is looking at numbers like my problem was oftentimes feeling like i haven't done enough and so i can't spend time on professional development or whatever else it might be that's not ticket work so i'd have done i don't know 150 percent of the baseline numbers by thursday and still on friday i would feel bad for not taking a few tickets that day even though i had done my fair share according to these numbers and processes that we have defined right so that's why i've looked into dashboards and as explorer and all that stuff to to get some psychological safety i guess for myself when i am deciding to spend time on non-ticket work yeah thank you for that that is really helpful and uh, we have one last question uh, in case anyone has any additional questions, I'd recommend adding them to the document. But the last question is, do you have any creative ways that you use GitLab that you'd like to talk about? I'm, I'm using it as a terrible email to webhook service with the service desk functionality. You can send an email, then an issue gets created, and you can trigger a webhook for issue events. Which is yeah, Price Acre. Sa saves, <laughs> saves me from from using AWS Lambda or anything else. <laughs> I don't know if I have anything too interesting, but maybe slightly less usual. Um, in that my one on ones are all based off of a um issue tracker instead of like Google Docs or something like that, uh, which I would say also helped me with my promotion a lot because I was able to just look at my issues. And I also have like a wiki for things that like nice things that people have said about my work, basically. And so it's very easy to look at that and compile stuff. Um, another thing is I pushed for the open source program to use Service Desk for um getting giving help to our open source partners um so that's like it's not that unusual it's exactly what it's meant for but um it's just an example of something we don't frequently do uh and yeah i am open source support liaison by the way although that's another thing that slipped with recent ticket load and stuff Anybody else? I was just going to mention that I, I use GitLab as a goals tracker and one-on-one -on -one tracker as well. So 
um, I find that pretty useful and it's easy for my manager to check in and we give each other tasks and able to keep track of, uh, you know, goal setting and stuff like that. Yep. That's pretty good. Um, thank you everyone for those answers. We are actually over time, so we won't have any more time for additional questions. Hopefully the next person facilitating this will do a better job at keeping track of time than I did. Uh, but if you do have any more questions or would like to expand on some of your answers, please update the document. And uh, anyone interested in reading those will just go through the document every now and then uh, see if it gets updated. So I'm going to stop the recording now. Thanks everyone for being here and being a part of this. Um, yeah, see you next time.